narrative, all right? You see spiritual Dharma here? I bet you, even though I'm asking you, you could put it in the chat if you like. How often have you met people? You can nod your head or just say yes in the chat, or you can just open your mic and say yes, because I'm sure we're gonna have a period when we do actual comments, Q and A. How many of you know people, have interacted with people, and they'll say one or two variations about what I'm about to mention to you? They will say, I'm trying to find myself, all right? You will hear that. Mm -hmm. You will also hear, as I'm trying to find myself, God isn't through with me yet. And it should be God, God isn't through with me yet. And then you will also hear summarily, people will ask you, you know, what are you doing or how are you handling this? And what, are you, what is your next move? You, you hear this as well. Well, I don't really know. I'm just taking it one day at a time. It's in God's hands. I'm sure you guys have heard that before. Yes or no? All right. Yes. yes. And so when you plug into your condition true, identity, true, true. And when you plug into your condition identity, you will find that I guarantee you at least 80% of you all listening on the platform know a melanin dominant person that has what you would call a nickname. Whatever they were named at birth, the people in the neighborhood or their friends called them something different. <laughs> and whatever their friends called them different was usually more characteristic of their temperament and their personality and whatever they were born with. I'm sure you're familiar with that, are you not? Yes. And there are even people that will come to you and whatever it is on their birth certificate, they're like, yo, man, like, you know, I don't go by that, man. You know, everybody called me Glide. Or everybody call me. Um, you know they have a nickname. You feel me? They might call me. Name. They call me a fade, and everybody, whatever those things are, we go by those things. Now, what I want you to understand is I'm talking to you guys about what I just showed you call the human octahedron. The human octahedron. Let's see if the slide is gonna pop up next. Maybe I have to go get it if it's not in my face. No, I'm, I just have to wait till it pop pop up. If it doesn't pop up, I'll go back to this foundation slide to show you. This will work as well. This is this is you can't see the three dimensional nature of this, but you can look closely in the center and you see these two pyramids. Pyramid at the top, pyramid at the bottom. That's an octahedron. It's four sides on the pyramid. Okay, four sides here. Octahedron. I made a comment earlier about a human being a photo bioelectromagnetic transducer. Most humans are unaware that females by nature are magnetic. Men by nature are electric. But humans are also electric on one side and magnetic on the other side. This is how they pull and they balance energy. They do it naturally. And the resonance that humans embrace that allows them to find comfort comes from the chakras resonating as you connect with someone that you feel connected to. That's back to what we talked about vibing. But when you get past your intellect, you can intuitively line up with people that you have resonance with or compatibility with as long as you don't start trying to analyze them with your brain. As long as you allow your intuitions to tell you what's going on, you can read them fairly well. I say intuitions, not your emotions. And that's a major difference. So what has the albino Anansi done to us? They have supplanted our identity with artificial intelligence. I bet you at least two thirds of you on the platform have a smartphone. Maybe all of you have a smartphone. And I bet you at least two thirds of you that have a smartphone you may not know the first seven numbers of the people that you frequently talk to on your smartphone. Because what happens is when they ring you, their name will show up or whatever you have in your phone for them to actually communicate with you. And you no longer have that need to memorize those numbers because they're in your phone. And beyond that, you also moved into a mindset of when you want to call these people, you may not be able to call them from a lot of people not even using landlines anymore. You have to go into your directory, your contact list, and pull their name up because you no longer remember their number. And you don't remember their number because you're not engaging that part of your brain anymore to pull up that data because the simple algorithm in your phone 
that has a contact list, it has attached those particular names with those numbers. And now that name is attached to the number, but you no longer see the number because it's the code that's embedded in your phone that you don't see. And then as you move a step further, if you misplace your phone or you got a new phone, you trip for a little while. You go into this mindset of like, damn, where's my phone? I, I need my phone. Because you become attached to the phone. Similarly, you chastise your children and young folk when they get locked down playing video games. But you are attached in a different manner than those youngsters are playing those video games because you've actually bonded with that. Like guys at Paris Island, they used to tell you that you bond with your rifle because you needed your rifle. But people have bonded with their devices so much now that if they cannot find a device, they find themselves tripping. So we're in that arena now, whereas you don't know yourself anymore because you have so many distractions to distract you from who you are. I'm going to give you another simple example. You see this brain with these people chanting around it? I'm sure you've heard the expression of things going viral online. I've seen some dumb people do dumb crap, like take a teaspoonful of cinnamon, take a scorpion or a vampire pepper, and before you know it, their eyes are watering, they're coughing and they're sneezing, and they're doing it because they've seen other people do it and they say, oh my God, it's gone viral. A little while ago when I was talking to you about the Biblios, the book, the pen was mightier than the sword, but now we do things in cyberspace. A number of you in the audience, particularly those of you over 60, you remember when there was a catalog order service that was Sears and Roebuck and Spiegel and probably a JCPenney's catalog. Now, Amazon has taken that to a whole new level. You follow me? People order things online and they have a catalog online that you can look at whatever you need. But here is the trick. Back to these people chanting around your brain. I'm not even talking about Siri or Alexa. If you order anything online, doesn't matter if you're using your computer or even if you're using your phone, you can go back to your computer or back to your phone and the algorithm that recognize what you did and the IP address that's associated with your computer and your phone, do you not see advertisements coming up for similar products trying to get you to purchase more of whatever it was you purchased? That's those algorithms at work. And the funny thing about it is when you try to get out of those particular um, um, programs or platforms, it may be a little teeny tiny X over in the corner that is difficult for you to see to click and get out of it. You are now in a feedback loop and the algorithm has put you in that feedback loop. And the challenge about getting out of that feedback loop, when you try to get out, sometimes you click it, it takes you deeper into that wormhole. And the irony of it is when you go into that wormhole, you may pause for a few seconds with certain signage that you see. It could be clothing, it could be lingerie, it could be music, but wherever you pause, the computer is collecting data to see how much time you spend there. And as it collects that data, it is creating a file. So when you come back, there are cookies that may show up that you didn't even know were being generated. So when you go back to your main devices, you get flooded with all these advertisements. So when you see these people surrounding this brain like a mantra, that's what happens in cyberspace with these algorithms. The AI will surround you and your journey and when you get surrounded by the artificial intelligence, oftentimes you do not know how to navigate and get away from that platform. There was a time when the pen was mightier than the sword. Now, the computer. Don't you remember when people were complaining in Texas and in Detroit and on other major cities that someone had compromised their grid? They compromised the grid so they were not getting enough energy um, to run the systems in that particular city, the infrastructure. They, they couldn't have the AC, their lights were out, all types of things. On the other hand, a solar flare could basically make you have a, a brownout or lights go out just the same way a storm could do if they fall on the line. But hackers can do that as well. A hacker can get into your system and shut down everything. A hacker can get into your system and rip part of your identity away on a lot of these social network platforms. That's AI, artificial intelligence at work. And when it does happen, if you wind up with identity theft, you literally are in a computer as a barcode. You no longer have a physiognomy or anything that's relevant. And what happens in a nutshell is 
Your identity is literally subject to a reset. They have to take everything away related to you and let you start all over again. That's just like you traveling to an international country and running out of um, pounds or euros or dinars or pesos and you go somewhere and you lose your passport. And if you lose your passport and you don't have any identity and you don't have any currency, you know you're up S Creek, particularly if you're a melanin dominant person. And that's when you have to identify someone that knows you. Suppose you don't have your cell phone. Now you see how trapped you are? You don't have your cell phone. And now your body is releasing a set of compounds, and I'm going to come to them momentarily, stress hormones. And those stress hormones are basically jumping off the radar. I'm going to come back to this slide. Those stress hormones are jumping off the radar because the part of your brain called the amygdala has been hijacked. And that part of your the amygdala is down here. And that's the part of your brain that causes you to emote and overly engage in a lot of emotional reactive behavior. And where you see this little blue part here, it doesn't have a label for it. It's a particular part of the brain referred to as the cingulate gyrus. This is the part of the brain that falls in love when people are wrapped up with porno, wrapped up with video games, wrapped up with their religious beliefs. And we have an on off switch that's direct related to technology. As Soon as you get exposed to that technology again, it will introduce you to something that you are familiar with. And when it introduces you to something that you're familiar with, you get a surge of activity and that surge of activity can overly engage the amygdala where you emote and the memories that are also associated with this part of the brain. And when that kicks in, guess what happens? You are now in sensory overload and you're no longer thinking, you are reacting. And when you move into that level of reacting, guess what takes over your behavior? Artificial intelligence. Because you're no longer thinking, you are reacting. The beauty of realizing your loss is to say to yourself, I need to get my bearings. I'm not exactly sure where I am. I have a general idea. I think I'm lost. When you can consciously do that, you can recalibrate. But have you ever been driving and you had your GPS on and your GPS told you to turn some damn where there was not a turn there? Or your GPS took you somewhere and so all of a sudden you're, it's like GPS offline, back online, turn around. Asking you to turn around somewhere you should not be turning around. You follow me? Now that's that first stage artificial intelligence. Smarter artificial intelligence, there was a time, some of you should know, you used to be able, you used to have to pay for your navigator. You had to buy it. Now GPS is sophisticated enough to read your voice pattern and tell you what you want to do. It's free. And there are even other kinds of software that will tell you when there's a state trooper nearby or a vehicle on the freeway because those satellites are telling you what's up. And in the meantime, if you really, really have a smart car, your smart car will warn you and tell you there are certain things going on that you need to pay attention to. I'm not just talking about that check engine light that comes on. I'm talking about a smart car. But I just want to plant this seed in your head so that you will know. Imagine this little imagery of the brain here. This is continental Africa. Up around Central Africa is a compound called coltan. And that coton, they're robbing the hell out of Africa because it's what, that's what they use to create this technology that allows you to have smartphones and aircrafts that can fly on automatic pilot and your Bluetooth in your phone to talk to Bluetooth and other phones that you no longer talk to the person and say, like, yo, you mind sending me your playlist? Years ago, Mac used to allow you to burn your own CDs in the side. Now they don't do that anymore. You have to actually go online and purchase a certain amount of time or features and you pay for it regularly. So where are you now? The algorithms. Do you know that we have cybernetic units, not just in Japan, but in major cities in the US that you wouldn't see any of this hardware because they have a silicon coating over it and the robotics are so sophisticated now that they look like human and you cannot tell if they're in fact not human until you get a few meters, not yeah, a couple of meters close to them so that you can monitor their movement, unless you're just that perceptive. Now, this is the system that you need to read if you really want to understand the threat and the problems with artificial intelligence. 
I'm going to give you a couple of examples that uh, Sister Ruha Benjamin has dropped in this book. Because people were asked, you know, where can I read this? Where can I find this? So I want to give you an idea. Um, this particular book that this sister has authored, she has another one. I'll share the other one with you later on. But I want you to know that um, there was a reference. If you guys were driving in a city and someone told you that you needed to um, look for Malcolm X Boulevard um, in a particular vicinity, then you would know to look for Malcolm X Boulevard. But are you aware it was only in the early 2000s that the software had been updated in the GPS to stop saying Malcolm 10, it, it would turn the X into a 10, Malcolm 10 Boulevard. So Sister Ruha points out the things that you may not know, you can actually use Martin Luther King Avenue, Malcolm X Boulevard, and you can pretty much use that data with um, an algorithm to determine if you are in a quote unquote predominantly black neighborhood. Because usually those streets or those avenues have been associated with people of color and people of color have requested that they have that kind of nomenclature or signage in those neighborhoods. Now, race after technology, um, Sister Benjamin points out that if you are relying on algorithms that are written by people that do not value your culture, and what's so unique about Sister Ruha Benjamin is she's not a quote unquote computer person per se, this sister teaches African-American studies. Are you following me? And the reason why I'm bringing that to your attention is the people in technology are so well trained. And when you get trained, you do what you were trained to do. Like when a brother was saying, what do you want to share about your background? And I said, people train you. Like if I didn't have a sense of identity when I went to Howard University, chances are very likely that they could have trained my identity out of me. All right. And I mean that literally, because when you get into that training protocol and people tell you, if you want to be successful, you need to do this, you need to do that. And you need to do what mainstream Americans do in order for you to be successful. And if you don't do what mainstream Americans do, then chances are likely that you're going to have a stalemate. But add to that the AI that's screening you. How many of you have heard of melanin dominant people submitting job applications where their name could be something like Muhammad Abrullah Salah? or something like that, um, Ibrahim, and they'll tell you like, yo, bro, you're not going to get a job with a name like that. You just better put Michael up there, you feel me, and tell your friends they call you this and that because the AI will kick you out of the potential employment file because the people at the company may not want to identify people because the AI has already identified people that might have an Islamic name to be a potential terrorist threat simply because of the damn name. Are you following me? And so at that level, the AI becomes very discriminatory and it's not beneficial. In a couple of moments, if we get to those slides, I'm going to share with you how doctors are so well trained that they do not provide appropriate medical intervention for melanin dominant humans, particularly our women, and to a lesser degree, our children. But they do it across the board and they do it like it's routine. And that's because of the system of racism and white supremacy. This is what the sister had to say. She said, I think we've entered a phase, now I'll just read the yellow. One of the challenges we face is how to meaningfully differentiate technology that are used to differentiate us. This combination of coded bias, note, coded bias and imagined objectivity, note, imagined objectivity is what I term the new Jim Code. And she used that as a play on Michelle Alexander's book, The New Jim Crow. And what you may not know now, we have technology that's in place that can discriminate against you. Give you a simple example. Suppose you were in a neighborhood in a city and they had droids uh, monitoring the neighborhood, all right? And they had these droids monitoring the neighborhood, but the droids were connected to ground-based robotics. And the ground-based robotics would be fed information from the droids. Now, if the droids had been programmed to look for what state troopers would say in a heartbeat, um, you look suspicious. You're driving a, a, a sports car that costs over 100K. I didn't recognize you as being an athlete or an entertainer, so you look suspicious because you're driving a car that costs 100K 
And the primary criteria was that this person is operating out of their software. I saw a black dude not sitting up straight in a car that costs over 100 k and he's leaning over, so I pulled him over. And the black dude could have to take a leak, urinate. He could be in a rush to pick up his kids from school. He could be in a rush to meet someone. And they say you were driving six miles over the speed limit. And you say, I know that, sir. And he's like, driver license registration. And depending upon what state you're in, it's been a few isolated states to ask the damn people, do you own this car? <laughs> do you own the car? And if you say you own the car, well, by chance, you have the pink slip in the glove compartment. Hell no, you're not carrying around the pink slip in the glove compartment of your car. But if you don't know how to talk to this person, you are now being non-compliant. But if you don't understand the algorithm that he's running in his head as his software, because he's like the Borg in Star Trek, he's been programmed to stop anybody black driving a car that costs over 100K that he cannot pinpoint in his database as an entertainer or an athlete or someone that he's seen on television. And I know 80% of you all in the audience are familiar with that. Now, what we're about to dance with is when you see this is Picard, from a Star Trek series, but we're also going to play with what we now know. I bet you, you know, some black people right now tripping over whether or not they need to go see Barbie. All right. And you, if you know anything about that, then you know there was a time when Barbie was just Barbie. There was no brown Barbies. The Bratz dolls and the Cabbage Patch dolls, they were not even on the horizon. Okay. But when you look at the particular um, cybernetic units, today you have to figure out which one is real brain implants. The Borg, they were like ants. They were like bees. They communicate with each other. Are you aware that people do the same damn thing? Are you aware that we have chips now? You can get a high-end job with the NSA, the CIA, or the people that go in and out in Istanbul, that work in Interpol. You can do it yourself. I, I don't know if you've done it, but I don't do it. You can wave your cell phone and make a purchase uh, you can go online and purchase all types of things with your cell phone. You can put your credit cards on your cell phone. You can open and close things with your cell phone. You can use your thumb, all of those kinds of things. Technology is encroaching on your sense of identity. And I put this here to let you know where we're about to go. Where we're about to go is we're about to go into the CRISPR format. I think I'm going to talk for another 10 to 12 minutes and see if we can do some Q&A and begin to line up some fundamental things uh, because I, I want to make sure people have an opportunity to make comments and ask questions. You may not know about CRISPR, but we're modifying genetic material now, and we've already been able to clone. So I'm going to talk to you about what we're doing now with the AI, for example, what's happening in Hollywood. You've heard a lot, a lot about writers going on strike, the Writers Guild. Do you see chat GP4 here? Chat, this is also artificial intelligence. But chat GP4 can duplicate how authors or creators write scripts by com um, combing um, meta databases of their writing samples. For example, let's say if all of us here are, are very active Garveyites, right? And let's say we go out together on a regular basis, but we, we dress a particular way. So before you know it, the actual um, CTI, the cameras would have taken pictures of us when we go together. And as it, it collects the data on us, it can say, well, we go here, and we order non-alcoholic drinks, or we order some kind of smoothies and blah, 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 blah. And we also listen to this type of music, OK? Now, if one of us is involved with some kind of um, misinterpretation of who we may or may not be, then that computer, the AI, will pull up a file that say we all hung out together. And we all hung out together. So now we are suspect to be involved in what the other person may have found himself inadvertently involved in. That's how it can work against you. Now, the Writers Guild are worried about if I, you've been writing for 10 years, the computer can actually go in and read everything you've written for 10 years. And guess what it can do once it's done that? It can duplicate how you write. And when it duplicates how you write, the US government claims that we don't have any way to control that. Python is just an introductory one. But chat GP4, I'm going to point out to you a couple of the kinds of protocols that they use. You could look at these people here. A computer could scan you in the office, and they could say, the only person here that we want to interview because the AI has scanned the people because you have a lot of people in line to be interviewed, and someone may come up and take this person out of line, all right, 
take this person out of line and tell these other people they've already gotten their quota of people to interview today because the AI said that we don't want this black dude, we don't want this woman wearing this hijab, we don't want this guy because he's too old, this person is too old, and this person in this wheelchair that's compromised, maybe we can find something special for this person to do. We don't want this person either. But we definitely want this guy, you see? The, the algorithm will check off potential candidate to be interviewed. Are you feeling me? All this happens without you knowing it. So just to summarize for you where we are now, algorithms are no longer doing simple things. We're at what we call deep learning algorithms. They have names like AND and RNN. When I first processed this, I was thinking about CNN News. Well, let me give you an example of the deep learning models and algorithms. And they can be biased as hell. Include convolution of neural networks. You know what that means? They have these particular algorithms fed into an, a neural network and the artificial intelligence can calibrate how to how to how to calibrate and use these neural networks all together like all of these was the sensory intake right and this would be processing just like your brain encoding the information making decisions about what's going to be done with the information all of this is the raw data the raw data goes in and in a neural network inside of the artificial intelligence will collate, calibrate, decide what to do with this data, and then determine how it's going to respond. That's where we are now with artificial intelligence. Now, let me see if I can take you places. This is how we used to communicate. You remember, fellas, you remember, ladies. You play a song, you listen to the song, you look across the room, you feel the person's vibe, they feel your vibe. But now you have a damn app, right? This song is played. You'd even go up to the DJ and say, yo, man, you mind playing this slow tune by the Dale Fonis? I'll play this old slow tune by Marvin Gaye or whatever. Drop this tune for me by um, Roberta Flack or Earth, Wind, and Fire. But now you have an app. And the app says this person likes this and that person likes that. And the apps are already biased. Like this would be in a computer database. This is what guys are using down in Me and Me uh, back in 2015. They were using mugshots of people that had been arrested for target practice. So what does that tell the, the guy out doing his job? If you see a black dude that vaguely looks like any of these guys based upon your recall, you should shoot these person. Not at body mass as the average person is trained, but you can see you shoot them, you want to take them out. Because you've been programmed to do that. I have a whole protocol that my person was blessed to develop called desombification which is how can we get the ignorant stuff out of your head? Algorithms again. Look at the algorithm. This is what the algorithm states. Reveille, low risk. Reveille, check it out. One domestic violence, aggravated assault, one grand theft, one petty theft, one drug trafficking, subsequent offense, one grand theft. Medium risk, Robert Cannon, one petty theft. Subsequent offenses. Imagine you plug in this kind of data into a computer database. All right. Now they are, they told you this brother was ten. He's high risk. Okay. This person is low risk. Let's look at what these individuals have been involved in. You look at their history, and you can see that the history, when you plug the data in, the data is incongruent with the outcome. Ladies. Black woman, 22% more likely to die from heart disease, 71% more likely to perish from cervical cancer, 243% more likely to die from pregnancy or childbirth. If you have this kind of data into a computer, guess what the computer is going to say in terms of the insurance company? High risk, we are not going to insure you. High risk to have problem pregnancy. So you're going to be a candidate for someone to tell you, you should probably go and not get your tubes tied, but you should probably go and have a hysterectomy. Because you getting pregnant is a high risk pregnancy. See the data? See the black people? All this data is fed into the computer. And so the computer makes decisions about who should live and who should not live. I, th I think I need to take you somewhere. I need to take you specifically to a place. Maybe you'll ask questions about it. What happens when the machine does not choose you? 
what happens when all the traffic cops in cy cyberspace identifies you as high risk? What happens when the people say, you can't go to work unless you get this particular shot? If you don't get this shot, you lose your job. And though it's experimental, what happens when people tell you that you are a disservice to humanity because you don't want to be an organ donor? And if you know anything about organ donation, they take every damn thing before they release you to your family, okay? Which means you might get held up. Your funeral might be even getting delayed, all right? I think I'm going to begin to stop and open the floor up because I don't know how long I'm supposed to talk, but I want you to know this. Everything I've been telling you about algorithms, Dr. Francis Cross Wilson laid out a long time ago, and she laid it out, but she pointed out specifically about pineal calcification in Caucasian people, the crest theory of color confrontation and racism. And she also noted that how university basically told her she needed to leave in the mid 70s because she had written a theory to help us better understand how crazy vanilla people were. And Dr. Richard King and Dr. Wilson together, their research pointed out that our vanilla brothers and sisters had calcified pineal glands. And the calcification of the pineal gland translated into melanin dominant people least likely having calcified pineal glands, meaning their pineal gland was intact over 80% of the time. Conversely, Europeans pineal gland was compromised and these individuals um, literally, they only had a functional pineal gland 10 to 50% of the time in terms of being functional, not calcified, 10 to 50% of the time. Here, 80 to 98% of the time, their pineal glands were not calcified. What does this mean? This, this, and this is going to make you, I'm telling you candidly, not what I think, is going to make you less inclined to be a spiritually upright person, recognizing your brother and sisters as brother and sisters. Because when the pineal gland is calcified 50 to 70% of the time in adults, what they don't tell you is that data is skewed. Because if you just look specifically at Caucasians, you will find the calcification 85 plus percent of the time. But when you include melanin dominant people, dark people, you find it skews the data to imply that that's the spread. But that is not the spread. The spread is more like what I share with you when I share this particular slide with you. And this is scientific data that documents the pineal calcification and how it relates to consciousness. Um, I think I should pause to see if people have questions or comments. That way we can funnel some of the information. It's also algorithms. If you saw this black woman that was arrested, you saw her picture, you're gonna think she did something really bad. You saw him, you're gonna wonder what he did. And if the algorithm is scanning for, you know, like mug shots and they find this guy, the algorithm may say smiley face, teeth showing, um, least likely to be a candidate to be involved in a crime. This lady may get mistakenly identified for someone else without the narrative that she was actually arrested and had a mugshot taken because she allowed her child to play in a park unsupervised, where this vanilla kid was raping an unconscious woman. But the algorithm says, look at that smile. Look at this lady. Who looks like they're more likely to be a culprit involved in crime? Same here, algorithm. This woman is breastfeeding her baby. The algorithm, when you look at the narrative, it reads a durable photo of a, a graduate, a graduating university student breastfeeding. It goes viral. This woman, breastfeeding mom's college graduation photo stirs controversy. You see, now it's negative. It's problematic. Here it's positive. Are you following me? You remember when they tried to blame Trayvon Martin for his own murder? That he looked suspicious. He's walking around in the neighborhood in a hoodie. He looks suspicious. Algorithm. Hoodies and black guys, they are a suspect. I think I'll stop because I'll keep talking and I don't want to do that. I want to invite people's comments and questions because I'll probably have a slide to respond to it. And more importantly, you may have something that you want to contribute. But put this in your memory bank. Can you read what's on the screen? Uh. And because I don't know exactly when we're supposed to stop, I want to respect the fact that people oh. might have comments or questions. Well, let me say, my brother, uh, according to the committee, you've got so much information that I should not interrupt. <laughs> and uh, 
I, I, if you want to go on, you what I'll do is I'll. I, answer, I think questions. I'll... You're right. We, if anybody has any questions, they should come up now and and, and have this question. They may, you may have some people with some questions. So if anyone has questions, uh, please come up because we are we are. Um, yeah, another thing I would say, my brother. Uh, normally, if you're a little a 19 minute, but uh, again, I was told if there's more information coming from you and you 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 uh, you can carry on, then you can. I, I should allow it. Let me say. Okay. Well, at point any at any point that someone has a comment or question, they can just raise it. They can either put it in the chat or they can raise their hand, and you can acknowledge them. But I want to bring something to your attention that I've been trying to tell you. I'm okay. sure you guys know the guy's name, Netanyahu, right? Um, uh, prime, prime Minister of um, Israel. You know his name, Netanyahu. I bet you he would tell them to take it out if he knew that this brother, Brother Otis Borkin, actually invented, designed the pacemaker. He would probably tell them, you need to take that out of my chest. You follow me? Mm -hmm. And I, I mentioned that to you because most of us know about um, Bill Gates. We know about um, what's the brother's name with the Apple computer? Um, all right, come on up. T tell me, Henry, what's his name? Apple computer? Uh, yeah, you, you mean the, the real inventor? <laughs> um, Steve Jobs. Jobs, yeah. Yeah, because I, I always call him Jobs. <laughs> and I screw his name up, and I and I want I don't want black people to say, "Damn, the brother's name is Jobs," because I know um, that um, Mayor Fenty been trying to mac his widow ever since he crossed over. But at any rate, well, you know, he's actually Iranian. Mm -hmm. Oh, Steve Jobs yeah. was actually Iranian. Well, you know, unfortunately, I have some friends that are Persian, and they tell you when mm -hmm. you come here. You literally have to, uh, I don't know if both of his parents are Iranian, but I, I, matter of fact, I have some friends that speak Farsi and they'll tell you mm -hmm. very clearly that um, when you come here, y your choices are not like Persian or Iranian. You have to identify as white. You follow me? Yes. So I, yes. I, I, mentioned I, I, to you, I mentioned him to you because this brother here, Mark Dean, yes. Um, uh -huh. yes. critical brain link at IBM, all right? Gave them mm -hmm. the color PC behind the scenes, created mm -hmm. the interface so that your computers could talk to the printers. And I'm, mm -hmm. I'm bringing them up because I'm talking to you about AI behind the scenes people. Mm -hmm. And I want to show you this sister, right? And you check mm -hmm. out that afro, right? Yeah, I, I know Dr. It. Valerie. <laughs> you know, you know Valerie? Well, you tell, yes, Valerie uh, that, you tell Valerie that Coco gave her a shout out because her bush is rocking. I know she got to be damn near what, 80 now, right? Yeah, and she and that particular picture has over a couple million views. Yeah, because she's wow. fine as she's like a wasp in a jumpsuit. You pardon my colloquial <laughs> digression. But the reason why I said that is to point out to you this sister's a genius. She's the one behind the last step program that NASA used mm -hmm. to actually create 3D imagery of the planet Earth. Why am I bringing it up? Mm -hmm. They call it an illusion transmitter. You feel me? Mm -hmm. Now she had mm -hmm. a, a patent for it, but I'm pointing this out because. People don't understand the brains behind a lot of the things mm -hmm. that are used in artificial intelligence, like my girl here, okay, Marie mm -hmm. Van Britten. You know, your whole mm -hmm. home network system to, for burglars and all that crap was invented by, the, invented by this sister that lived in Queens. Why am I bringing it up? Because you are hoodwinked, bamboozled, led astray. And when you become <laughs> bamboozled and led astray, you don't understand that a lot of the stuff that you think that you need your phone to do, if you were to sit down, Get yourself a juicer, catch a little sunlight, do some deep breathing. The stuff that you think you've forgotten, you could reactivate what I was telling you earlier about the technology and the third stage mm -hmm. programming called deep learning and artificial intelligence. Your brain can do all of that crap, but we don't do it. And one of the things that's undermining our ability to do it, are we recording? Are we on Facebook? How much? I'm going to be like, what's that brother's name? What's that brother's well, we, name? We, that always gets in trouble. What was his name that said, I'm going to get in good trouble? He had a, he's on a coin now. Oh, oh. Uh, you know his name, all right? Tell yeah. his name. The full lip brother that was with Martin Luther King, they hit in the head and tried to take him off the planet. He recently passed. You feel me? Was it John Lewis? 
John Lewis. Thank John you. Lewis yes. said, John Lewis <laughs> said, I, I, I do this to my students. So I have the answers in front of me on the floor. Um, to my students, to, to, he would say, I get in good trouble. He right. said, I get in good trouble. <laughs> and I'm about to get into some trouble. It's not going to be good trouble. Do you see this? Nuremberg code? Well, I am taking notes, Professor. I'm taking notes. Yeah, well, you can call me Coco. I only say Dr. Rossian when I have to go to NIA. So check this out. <laughs> um, Nuremberg Code. Where's my boy at? I, no, I, we didn't even get involved in Nuremberg Code until about 45 to 60 years later. Now take a note. I even, I even pulled out my uh, biology of psychology notebook uh, textbook, oh, so too. So, 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 so check this out. Look. Scientists must be prepared to terminate the experiment. You do realize that the recent wave of things that happened in your country was an experiment, right? Oh, yes. A oh, comprehensive yes. experiment. And it was also- I live with an endometrium. Uh, oh, yeah. I, I live with a doctor. <laughs> well, when, when a researcher. I, <laughs> a, a number of physicians would tell you that, I'll put it this way. What's the sister's name? Walensky. She just left mm -hmm. CDC at the end of June. She took the place of somebody else when she was at CDC because they said that they couldn't explain what was going on with the protocols for the vaccinations. Neither could they speak to the actual issues being raised about Wuhan and SARS-2, AKA COVID-19, um, COVID because it was above his pay grade. So they gave her the job. And then she had the job for a short span of time and she passed the job on to someone else. Because someone asked her, why aren't your people at work at CDC? They were working from home. And then they realized that about 35 to 40% of the people had not gotten their vaccinations. So they had to work from home. So you got people that understand microbiology and virology saying, oh, I don't think I'm going to take the shot. I prefer to work from home. Are you following me? So I'm playing a seat in your head now. And I just want to be quiet because this is what the brother said. Uh, the Nuremberg Code, um, the vanilla brother, he pointed out. The Nuremberg war crimes trials convicted Nazi doctors for, for murder, blah, 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 blah. By 1946, this particular person, uh, list of 10 conditions required for permissible medical experiments. Now, check this out. We didn't get on board until, was it the late 70s or the early 80s? The United States government. But check this out. We violated, wherever you see an arrow here, we came up with this new protocol that was experimental. And we also set the stage to diminish the likelihood of people looking like this by monitoring the numbers of people that would actually be able to have children because you've been told over and over again, the planet cannot sustain this amount of people, but more specifically, these kind of babies. And back to the slide that I'd share with you, the real banking crisis the on the what? Tuesday in the UK. The real banking crisis is we don't have enough of these. Wow. We don't have enough of these. And if you look at the expiration date here, age 35, uh, let me show you why. You see That's these? why they're outlawing the abortion. <laughs> oh, yeah. They need white babies. I, I, I'm not making it up. It's right before your eyes. Yeah. And one of the ways to do that is to plug into a slide like this. And I want you to know when they say reset, what happens if you reset your phone and you haven't saved your data somewhere else? What happens if you have not backed up your damn hard drive on your computer and saved your data and you reset it? What happens to the data? It's, it's being terminated because one of the things you realize is that- Terminated. With, with all this AI, if AI, um, driven data set and creation is that they they terminate it, they terminate the, your, your direct access to the ancestral and genetic information through through the blood and DNA. Oh, you 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 definitely dropped it. You literally hit it specifically. And I'm going. We had a slide originally. When we started talking about that ancestral DNA. We're going to go to it I'm, right now. We're open for comments and questions. Um, this is what they're working on. Look at that silly movie they cloned Tyrone. <laughs> There it is again, the real banking crisis. When you put stuff in the bank, I know you know some ladies that can basically go and sell their eggs. But I bet and, you, go ahead. And they all they they also quote unquote, you I'm um, harvesting the, the 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 uterine tissue as well. No doubt. 
No doubt. Absolutely. There was a time when some pro-black conscious sisters in the um, early 90s and early 80s, they wanted to take home their afterbirth, and doctors began to forbid them from doing it. You can't take it home. You remember, I remember when I dumped all kinds of, of um, what kind of, I had patchouli, sandalwood, frank and myrrh, and when they were in there to get it after my babies were born, I dumped a whole damn ounce of oil in it, and somebody said, we can't use it now. I said, oh, really? I'm glad. <laughs> Okay, so this is what I, I allow my students to see. I modify this. Why? Why? Back to that birth count. Why? One in every 15 black males. Why? Look at these Manila brothers. Why? Why do you have these statistics? By the way, these numbers, they change to about 66.5 during the pandemic core in D.C., and that popped up to be about 18 years different, and this went up to about 11 in the DMV just in 2021. So do you guys have any comments or questions? Well, the only thing I can say is that, that this whole artificial intelligence is, is almost like cutting off the um, frequency domain entrapment where, where you're actually being etherically hijacked. As a matter of fact, where's the slide that kind of touches on that? Um, I have a slide that Go ahead. Does anybody have any comments or questions? Well, uh, my brother, you have um, you have thrown so much into uh, my data bank here that uh, I need to process all this. <laughs> but you know what's funny? It take me some time because <laughs> it's all in your. It's, it's, it's funny. Yeah. I'm reminding you of things that you think you've forgotten. Because mm. I didn't even tell you about the details of this bad boy, the pineal gland in the water. Right. Other than pointing out to you that this is what they're working on. Mm. You feel me? And I mean, they're working, they used to call it brain sand up until the mid 90s. They didn't even respect the fact that they had a, a high level of functionality. Yeah, well, what's so interesting is that they actually, um, Let's just say they, they, they're learning how to manipulate the, the energy that's, that's being, being received um, by the skull and by modulating the, what they call calcium channels, uh, either through light or by electricity, they can actually modulate your flight or response syndrome, as well as to manipulate the psychic energy artificially. Oh, no doubt. And you know what? Um... This new generation cell phone of 5G, you've been seeing stuff from Infinity talking about 10G. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to touch that in this particular conversation, but um, we now have the ability to generate um, a kind of a call and response, a, a piezoelectric, as he was talking about your skull. Mm -hmm. because your, your skull is basically a piezoelectric chamber. That's why bald headed brothers oftentimes would kind of like lose their mind when their companion would rub their head. And sometimes the ladies would also find themselves like turned on by rubbing their head, but they didn't realize that they were actually basically manipulating piezoelectric currents when they did that. Same thing when you see little kids in the summertime, they're not sexually active, but the little boy is leaning on the girl on the car and the pubic bones are touching each other. Same thing black people did in the 70s and the 60s at the club and you would go slow dance, slow drag, and you get so aroused, you damn near have an orgasm. All those kinds, piezoelectric, right? And the same right. thing, somebody you care for, you hold their hand, and you're like, I just held your hand, and you got so aroused from just holding hands, right? Yeah, but, uh, we know this, but when you got technology in between, what you just said, bro, it, yeah, it, and, it makes it happen. And also, when you, when you, when you move certain tissues um, by quote-unquote, by, ch by, by, by choice, you're disrupting the electromagnetic energy flow of the body, as well as, well as the psychic energy, too. And that's all we got to say. And, and that's why you hear black people saying it all the time. They'll say like, damn, man, I don't like your vibes. What kind of vibes you throw at me? You feel me? But then the people would tell you with their education, well, there is a certain chemistry when you're around. I've noticed that chemistry. But we all, we know what it is. We just don't have the lexicon to go with it. And the reason why I'm not able to bathe you in this language is because they put all of the language that relates to your body. Remember I told you a carbon-based photo bioelectromagnetic? Mm -hmm. You see this relationship of sunlight to your uh, superchiasmic nucleus? It has a special network that communicates down 
to your cervical ganglia, up your spinal cord, back to your pineal gland. And this is for those black people that would say stuff like, I don't like that music, but the foot would start patting all by itself. You feel me? Yeah. And then, uh, then, there, uh, then also the music, when you, when you, with music with the lyrics, mm-hmm. is, is, is the energy manipulation um, ritual that they're doing when they train the singers to train and they do post processing in the studio. And oh, no. the, it's, it's, it's the acoustical post, acoustical post, post processing tied with the lyrics can create the, the these these energy manip, energy manipulation matrices. Absolutely, because black people are we are basically we're, we're governed by imagery. We're, we're mm-hmm. governed by movement that the insidious layers of movement. You feel me? That's how we process information. That's why, well, you know, Pele, I'm waiting for this new guy to basically move to the league of Pele in terms of soccer. And I don't need to tell you about um, Bill Russell, Will Chamberlain, vanilla people used to play basketball on a kind of a, like a, a horizontal plane. And um, black folk made them take it up a notch. It no longer stayed horizontal. They took the game to a whole new level. All these things have to do with how your body is designed to operate in a three-dimensional uh, matrix at this particular level, but also a multi-dimensional level in terms of what happens. I'm looking for the slide. I know I have a slide here. I hope I didn't dump it. You're going to see it in a second when we talk about the Bluetooth. This slide is about to come up. And this is how they got us, right? Now, we're like zombies. You see mm-hmm. people with the iPods on, they and they're walking off the damn the thing at the metro on the tracks, walking in front of the street. Um, at stoplights, running into the stop signs because they're wrapped up in the music. This is how we once communicated. And there are a few among us still can do that. But I want you to see this one slide. And, and uh, what is... um, one of the things, I was at a seminar one time and actually um, they had codified the, um, the, 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 was it DSM? You mean the Diagnostic Statistical Manual? Yeah, they they they, okay. they, they they codified it and then also tied it to the to the social media um, postings mm-hmm. and, and and voice and they, and they can actually trace a map out the energy mappings of the of the different different emotional responses and 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 that's how they that's how they do the quote unquote they set up their analysis systems. If you have an uh, Apple. Um, and you have a smart retina on your Apple. It doesn't matter if you have a little uh, a, a tablet or an iPad or you actually have a, a desktop. The retina, the smart retinas on them now, they follow you around. Mm-hmm. You, feel me? you sit in front of it, you go to the left, you go to the right, it'll actually calibrate and co- correct for the, for the screen. But what they don't tell you is, it's actually processing literally what you have your eyes focused on. Mm-hmm. You follow me? It's so much data that's being collected. Like if you were looking at like Netflix or the Disney Channel or Prime, and you have a smart TV, your TV is also watching you. You feel me? And it's not just watching you in terms of visual proximity. It's paying attention to everything that you do. So when you turn it on, the next time, if you really have a smart TV, particularly a second or third generation TV, the television will make recommendations to you about what you might want to watch. And you go, oh, God, really? You feel me? And if you purchase any damn thing on Amazon, next thing you know, your phone's gonna be receiving advertisement for you to purchase something similar and tell you when there is a sale. So I call that the cul-de-sac police technology, the AI, it will surround you and it'll pay attention to how much time you spend there. Even if you leave the area, it's still recording the fact that you stayed on this site that length of time. So we're in a very dangerous situation for two reasons. I'm gonna tell you about a weird movie and it's old. It's called The Manitou with Tony Curtis in it, the manager. And the movie is about machine intelligence and spirit intelligence. And spirit intelligence is basically carbon-based, sentient. And machine intelligence used to be silicon-based. But now machine intelligence is upgrading itself to deep learning AI. And I, sh- I shared a slide with you about deep learning AI when I when I took you to this slide to um, this particular slide. See deep learning models? Simple AI can give you GPS, but deep learning AI, think of deep learning AI as having 
six master chefs in the kitchen for royalty. One particular program is, is, is the pastry chef. The other one is the mixer for any type of liquor that you want. And the other one is making these rare exotic dishes. You follow me? And so when you have that kind of deep learning AI, they can all work simultaneously. And for example, if you are ordering something and someone says that person is lactose intolerant, the actual AI will say, we have some almond seed milk that we can use to substitute for that. And then you somebody say, this person is a vegan. Okay, we're gonna substitute that with pure maple syrup. And honey. Imagine a machine being able to do that. The technology can do that. And let's say, how many of you have seen people, they got their little uh, bitmojis in their smartphones and the complexion is like, four stages lighter than what they really look like. You follow me? And the hair is nothing like what they look like. If, and I don't mean a caricature. It means that the bitmoji doesn't look anything like them. You feel me? There used to be a time when you could take your kids to a place called Build a Bear. You know, you go build a bear at the mall. Now you can go into a particular place and get software and you can build a human. You can build a human that's athletic. You can build a human that sings. And you can actually have characters like that that you engage in video games. When you... I, I think the music might be one of those times, like the club, the lights about to go down. But does anybody have any comments or questions? Yeah, yes, sir. Um, if no, Hello. I wait before I, I should wait and see if anybody else will, will uh, come up with a question. Anybody has a question for? Dr. Coco. No. Well, hello? Ancestral. AI. Oh, ancestral AI, he says. Yeah. I mean, I'm trying to figure out which dimension am I responding to. Is it just saying ancestral AI in general? Or... I think it's. I think it's referring to ancestral intelligence. Okay. Yes. Um, because yes. Um, the, the whole thing is, is that with this artificial intelligence, is that they actually are filtering out your access to the ancestral realm and other realms of intelligence, and it's and it's and it's almost like cybernetic entrapment. Well, that's exactly what it is. What you just said, precisely. Because it's it's just like imagine either one of us having a grandmother, and we visit her, and let's oh, I'm not going down to the south. And she's looking at her stories, the soap operas, right? And you walk in front of the television, right? Sometimes she didn't have to do anything but look at you for you to know that you need to move. And sometimes she could have trained you so well that you know that you need to wait a while or bypass or duck before you get in between her and that imagery. And so this AI is so sophisticated that what it does, you can see the slide I put before you. You see your mind is here and your brain is down here. And I cracked the joke about people say, have you lost your mind? And when humans are really intimately connected with each other, you know, black people would tell you very quickly, damn, bro, man, that honey got your nose, man. Which means she has your life force. You feel me? You cannot sleep, you cannot eat, you cannot drink. And then people will say, what's up with you? What do you have on your mind? And so when you have this kind of technology, most people don't realize that your cell phone and your um, computer, it generates so much light in electromagnetic pulses of energy that that cell phone can actually create an atmosphere in your body that will make you eligible to wind up to have a variety of different types of cancers that might not show up until years later. Particularly if you keep it on and it's hot because it's pulsing. Now back to the light and the Bluetooth and the ancestral connection. They tried to give you a peekaboo when they did Black Panther. Oh, you, you, you saw, um, what's his name, Shala? His character go back and he actually talked to his ancestors about some things that he thought they should have done and blah, 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 blah. And they basically allowed him to come back. Um, I have a slide, I, I hope I can get to it quickly to show you about DMT. It's called the spirit molecule. And it's intimately tied to what happens in the pineal gland. And vanilla people claim that they don't know what it does because they haven't figured out exactly how to measure it yet. I'm about to get to that slide to show you. This, there it is. See? This is called dimethyltryptamine, all right? Dimethyltryptamine, DMT, for the abbreviation. What we do know is also associated 
or what you call um, out of the body experiences, um, near death experiences, um, it increases sevenfold when a person is dealing with some type of trauma. They figure out a way to actually activate it when you go on your um, totem search in any of the um, major islands or particularly to South America. And it's in the pineal gland, but it doesn't surface unless you're dealing with some kind of mystical experience because the pineal gland actually is responsible for you being able to like dream and see things in color. Also involved with clitoral engorgement in women and men waking up with morning erections. All those things that are regularly related to the cycles of melatonin. But what Europeans don't like to discuss with you is the significance of the pineal gland because as I shared with you before, a substantial amount of them have calcification or calcified pineal gland. So they're not gonna to talk to you about it. And they're not gonna to talk to you about it and they put it in journals. Who's gonna read the journal on molecules or the journal on synapse or the journal on cerebrology or neurophysiology? You're not gonna read those journals. Even the people that write in those journals, they only read what their peers have written. And that's by design to keep you ignorant to things that are inherently yours. As you made a comment a little while ago, like what's happening with ancestral DNA? It's still there. That's why you do libations. That's why you call them. That's why you ask for their permission to do certain things. You invite them, you welcome them. I know somebody on this platform has a relative that either close to Kwanzaa or Thanksgiving or Christmas or their birthday, they might make their favorite meal. They might do a special libation for them. They might even have an empty chair at the table for that person with a sample of that food there. Any of you all know people to do that? That's an, annual, that's an annual with our, when, when we do our uh, Kwanzaa uh, celebrating. But I'm saying that about the, the Division 330 UNIA. We have an annual Kwanzaa celebration on Nia night. And that's part of it. You know, I wish I could talk to you guys about Jekyll Island and the Native <laughs> Americans that live there and the Rockefellers and what they set up to dumb down our consciousness. As a matter of fact, they put it throughout the entire education system. You feel me? To keep you from knowing who you are and your connection to the Moors and how to talk to your ancestors. That's why I share what you in that slide about the oracles. We once relied on the oracles to communicate and connect with each other. And Europeans finally acknowledged that when they started doing heart transplants, that people would have cellular memory. You know, how are you going to remember what this person did? You never met the person. Not only that, how are you going to develop some of the same habits that that person had and you never met the person? I'm serious. Like this slide summarizes for you. The person, the soft-spoken woman that didn't drink alcohol, hated football, got a heart from a crashed biker donor, turned to an aggressive beer-drinking football fan. The eight-year-old girl who received the heart of a 10-year-old kid that had been murdered. She dreamt about the murder victim so frequently that her mother took her to a psychiatrist and they wound up talking to the police and they arrested the man that did it. Stay in the memory. Ancestor memory is no different. It's just that we don't talk to them. They did a little crazy movie called Coco for some of our Latino brothers and sisters. And they talked about how as long as you remember the person's name and you evoke them or you do a libation to them, you can continually maintain communication with them. And they still will show up like that fragrance that your grandmother or that perfume that she wore or their cigar, that whatever it was that they had that they wore all the time, it shows up around a certain time in your house. They're back. You feel me? But Europeans in my training will tell you, you're having a mental health problem. They call it anecdotal data. But I know now from meta-tagging data, you can actually collect this data. And I plan on using AI and some meta-analysis to come up with that kind of data. But trust me, universities don't fund this kind of research you get in trouble for doing this kind of research. And it's only good trouble 10 years later when vanilla people say, oh my God, that's very interesting. That's really interesting. Like the vanilla woman at Kubler-Ross, the, the near uh, research about death and dying, she was interviewing this lady that was one of the um, janitorial people at the hospital, and one of the nurses, LPNs, that would visit the people before they passed. And Kubler-Ross, the, the Swiss, the well-known psychiatrist that did research on death and dying, she got her foundation from talking to, um, you might say, the help. But she wrote about it. But um, I'm, I'm hoping that I can 
learn something from you guys. I want to tell you about these damn hypodermics, but I'm not touching it. Well, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well my brother, you know, we have, we have about 10, 10 minutes to play with. Um, uh, and if anybody has uh, questions or comments, um, you can go ahead and get that in. Well, I uh, mm -hmm. the experiences I've had um, with some of the things you've mentioned is, uh, you know, it's yeah, it's bringing me it's bringing back a lot of memories. I mean. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Especially um, dealing with um, you know police and other things, and uh, you know, yeah. But we're gonna have to have you again, my brother. Mm -hmm. This has been yeah. a, this has been a very this has been a great I should say a great presentation. Mm -hmm. um, Baba uh, Mosley. Yes. One of the things I'd like to add before um, is that there is hope on the horizon because I come. I, Actually, come across and been into other groups of the of the younger generation. There's a lot of, there's a lot of us who are studying AI and also mm -hmm. studying how to create our own our models and systems. So all is not lost. But the, like I said, like how we took over basketball and other sports in the, in the entertainment industry. <laughs> there's a lot of us of the across the age spectrum mm -hmm. that's studying this, and there's a lot of us who are actually. Um, in the process of designing systems. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I want to spook you before I let you go. I, I, <laughs> oh, let yes. You. Lately, you've been hearing a lot about these life forms outside the Earth's atmosphere. Probably a few of you are familiar mm -hmm. with Nibiru. Yeah, uh, yep, and, yep. And, um, but what they don't tell you is when they identify these um, unidentified aerial phenomena, Okay, um, they call them UAPs rather than telling you that uh, we damn so saw something that we know it came from outside of Earth's atmosphere, but because we don't know them by their call sign, we tell you we have mm -hmm. an unidentified aerial phenomena. You all mm -hmm. are young enough to know when they used to refer to them as quote unquote flying saucers, they stopped calling them flying saucers, then they started calling them sightings. And sightings meant, yeah, we saw something that was really there, and now we're saying, we know we saw something that was really there, but we don't know exactly what they're doing, but it's definitely there. You feel me? Um, 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 uh, Coco? Yes, sir. Uh, well, actually, there's a, uh, there's another group of us who has been studying this in detail, mm -hmm. and we and there's a lot of us with uh, some of the answers, so I want to call his name. We attended a lot of those clinical sessions or conferences. Mm -hmm. And what's not being talked about is that a lot of it um, was being not talked about is that there's a highly likelihood, the most likely likelihood is actually highly people will, will a lot of melanin. Oh, past, brother. past, <laughs> present, past, present, and future. Oh, no mm. doubt. It's it's a fact. We know it's a fact, and that's one reason why they're sitting on it, right? Mm. Um, mm -hmm. I'm sure you remember Creeflo, the, the the brother that um what's this guy's name is in the UK, he used to play soccer, he's written all these books. Oh uh, yeah, I know David Guy. Yeah, okay, you're talking about David Icke, right? He, he got buku information from this brother. I'm Great. bringing this up to say to you that you have to put the ummy and dummy to think that you're only life mm -hmm. form in a universe that has intelligence. Mm -hmm. And you have <laughs> more stars in this galaxy than there are fibers in your carpet in an auditorium. You feel me? And you have right. to be mm -hmm. downright super dummy to think otherwise. But you have to be mindful. The church cannot handle that yet. And vanilla what? people could not control the melanin dominant people on the planet if they didn't have this word, remember? Right. Mm -hmm. Because by um, nature, you're spiritual. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, What's interesting, because I attended the um, our, our feature in space, and there was a physicist who uh, who actually is one of the high um, officials in, in the Church of England. And what he said mm -hmm. was very interesting is that he said that the biblical prime directed is to search for extraterrestrial life. Mm -hmm. And this was and this was this was said at the National Cathedral about a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. See, you all already know. That's why I was just teasing Baba when Baba was um was he was processing like, yo, brother, give me a lot to think about. You already know this. I tell people it's just like prayer beads, right? You have these mm. clusters of information around your neck. 
All you have mm-hmm. to do is pull one every now and then, and you pause and you reflect. And that's what the brother yeah. was talking about. He's talking about your ancestors talk to you. And see, the thing is, yeah. we've lost our way. And most of us, mm-hmm. if our ancestors visited us, we damn near had cardiac arrest because we wouldn't be able to process the depth of information that they would be disclosing. It would give us anxiety. And like I said earlier, if you're eating a white man's food, white sugar, white flour, white milk, white salt, you've already basically taken away about 18 to 30% of your life. If those things are staples in your diet, and also those things, they dumb down your pineal gland's ability to maintain its viability. And beyond that, God forbid you're drinking tap water. Because 90% of all the water in the United States that comes out of your faucet is fluoridated. And fluoride will give you brain damage. Matter of fact, they put it in rat poison. You feel me? And I don't have slides to show you because I would have to thumb through and pull them up. So anything that compromises your pineal gland, think of you having a bunion in your brain, okay? And if you have a bunion in your brain, and that bunion that's in your brain it creates an irritant, and the irritant becomes inflammation. And if you have inflammation in your brain, the part of your brain that would ordinarily think and process information down in here, it has varying degrees of swelling around it. And that swelling will give you some jacked up moods and temperament. And I'm, I'm giving you a very concrete kind of um, metaphor to give an idea of how it works, because it's not that simple, but as it, the outcome is the exact same. You feel me? I'll give you a simple example. If you're not properly hydrated, and if your blood sugar is too low, and your blood is too acidic, you're going to have a jacked up attitude. Your grandmother used to say it to you this way. You certainly are in a bad mood. You need to take a laxative. All right? You need to clean your body out, and you'll just be different. And old people would say the same thing to you when they got in your flat around the holidays to eat. They eat a bunch of crap, and it was something they really, really wanted to eat. They say, you know what, I need to take some because I definitely got to have some of that cheesecake or some more of that mac to take home with me. So they go to the bathroom. Because when your body becomes acidic, your blood is not able to process the cascade of information that's constantly dumped into your blood from your hormones. And you misread people. You, you know, you're around those people and they'll just say, you certainly are in a bad mood. And you're like, everything out your mouth is negative. It's not me that's in a bad mood. You're projecting negativity. You feel me? Because your Bluetooth is not working. And people around you, when they see your Bluetooth working, sometimes they will be so jealous that they'll be throwing you all kinds of shade because they're trying to figure out why people are hanging around you and not hanging around them. And so they'll reduce it to something physical because they don't realize that you are their brother or their sister's keeper. And that's all part of the program. But it's been my pleasure to share my two cents worth with you guys. And I think it's very interesting that the computer geniuses oftentimes don't work with the computers. They work with studies that relate to identity. And, and this is Ruha's other book about viral justice. And I, I find it interesting that we have to have a whole discipline related to African-American studies for black people to understand their sense of identity. Like when a brother asked me about my background. Man, I, I have all that little funny training. And the funny thing about that funny training is to get around people and they won't understand that your training is for them unless you duplicate what vanilla people are doing. And I'm like, it doesn't make any sense to duplicate what vanilla people are doing because 80 to 90% of what vanilla people are doing is being done either unconsciously or paraconsciously to undermine your ability to maintain your sense of identity and personal integrity. And I'm not saying they're doing it with malice because a lot of them don't realize that they are dealing with Dr. Francis Cress Wilson theory, color, color, uh, Cress theory of color confrontation racism. Because when you say to them, matter of fact, that's a problem in AI. They said, we make our AI is um, not color sensitive. That's going to hurt you like hell because it damn certainly should be color sensitive so that it would know that black women get poor medical care and they live in maternal deserts and older black people get neglected. So you need to make it acknowledge your, your phenotype in order for you to get more appropriate care. But they only use it for negative reasons. Did you commit a crime or your candidate to commit a crime? The most sophisticated thieves in the history of planet Earth, you know who they are. The most well-known serial killers and documented in terms of percentages of death or loss of life of serial killers, you know who they are. You know who the most wasteful people are on the planet. 
you know who they are. And so when I bring up things like this, are you aware that a lot of um, colleges or universities are, have forbidden people to actually talk about what they call critical race theory? Mm -hmm. And I, I think my boy, Tony Browder, Howard University pretty much said they didn't want him his books to be used for anything they're teaching over there. What kind of crap is that? <laughs> so my brothers, my sisters, my family, mm. I'm through talking. I feel privileged to have had the opportunity to come and talk to you guys. I hope what I share with you has some threads of continuity in it. But we are a diverse people. We are not a, a, a monolithic people. And here's your reminder. When you want to get a question answered about something that's heavy related to computers, over 85% of the time, you're going to get one of your Dravidian brothers or sisters on the telephone. You're not going to get a Caucasian person. They're going to be halfway around the world. And they're going to say, can I help you? With your, what is it that you'd like to know about your computer? You feel me? It's either us or it's one of them. And remember this, John Glenn wasn't even thinking about going into space until one of those sisters from Hidden Figures calculated the math. Yeah. It, was, it was a Persian brother that came up with pie. I don't mean cherry or blueberry. I mean pie in your math. So thank you for having me. And um, I, I feel like I was talking to my computer because I was boring myself. But <laughs> I know. Well, you know, <laughs> my brother, what you have uh, poured on us, I mean, that's, that's a heavy shower of... Uh, information a heavy shower of knowledge and uh you know i hope we we've had uh, an adequate amount of basin to collect you know what came down uh and i'm saying i i thank you very much for coming on and sharing with us and uh, we must have you again uh, i'm honored baba, I'm, I'm absolutely yeah. honored. baba sengor uh, uh you know, his power is out, and uh, he's probably frustrated as hell that he can't uh, <laughs> get in here and uh, thank you by himself. But he did uh, tell me to thank you very much uh, for what you did. And uh, we are going to share this information with folks on our Black Learning Channel, the Black Learning Channel on YouTube. And it, it will also be on the the Facebook page of the UNIA Division 330 um, Facebook page, and it will be there. Uh, we're not taking it down, so anybody who wants to look at it again can do that or go back to that the Facebook page, or they can also go to the learning channel uh, on YouTube to get that. Uh, it's been great. Um, I don't know when we can be, we kind of, somebody has asked that you be come back on for this year, uh, but um, we'll see. So if you get a call from us, my brother, please be ready. <laughs> it's been my pleasure. Remember, I'm a drop of water and the ocean belongs to the universe. I'm the <laughs> one drop. So thank okay. you so much for having me. Oh, I'm yes. Uh, thank you again. And uh, let, let me make an announcement here. Um, our next Freedom Friday Forum will be on August 11th. And uh, that will be on independent African schools and the future African-centered education. I think it's a good follow-up, considering what we discussed here uh, uh, tonight. Uh, so, uh, it, you know, be ready, folks. Hopefully, uh, it, it will be something as great as what we've had here, but, but of course, um, what you've shared with us is uh, something that maybe we can apply when we talk about the future of African-centered education, because it's absolutely necessary that this knowledge be part and parcel of, uh, of our children in, in uh, in this world that they have to face. Uh, Baba Congo, you had something to say? Yeah, uh, Baba, um, Dr. Coco. Yes, sir. Every, every time I hear you, 
uh, I had to digest and think and dream and, you know, anyway, I, I really, I really, really appreciate you coming. And um, we, we hope when I call you again that uh, we can make things happen. And I know, I know that you know, you're, you're good on different subjects. This is a fantastic subject, uh, but um, there's quite a few different subjects that I've heard you on. And each time I've heard these in a different subject. So um, thanks for your scholarly work. Well, I'm, I'm absolutely honored, brother. And I, I just want to be frank with you guys. Mainstream academia does not smile upon disclosing this kind of information. Mainstream academia, like I said, Dr. Francis Cross Wilson Howard told her bye in the mid 70s. We're in a war and wars have to be engaged in on different battlefronts. And the last frontier is the human brain. And trust me, these people, they want that real estate. It is the most prized cyto architecture real estate on the planet is your brain. So again, you guys have a wonderful evening. Stay healthy and continue to be your brother and your sister's keeper. And I'm just a tool to be used by the family. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you again, my brother. Uh, family, um, I know you're going to be glad when you see us with this brother on again. So uh, <laughs> let me see. There's a comment that I, I needed to. Uh, Mama Tendai. Uh, Okay, Mama Tendai said that your, your presentation was spectacular and that the black brain is most desired because of its creativity. Uh, so Mama Tendai is our Minister of Education in the, in the UNIAACL Rehabilitating Committee. Oh, Asante Sana, that's a serious compliment. And merci beaucoup, shukran. Yes, and that's it. All right. Well, thank you, folks. Remember, this comes to you from the Woodson, Vanneker, Jackson Bay Division of the UNIA ACL Rehabilitating Committee 2020. And if there's anybody using that name and has to say official in front of it, you have you can ask them. If you are official, why do you have to have official in front of your name. So again, good night. Until we meet again. This is Baba Mosi Matsimilo, President, UNIACL, Division 330. Saying, until we meet again. Ashe. Hotep. Okay. Brother Hero, can you take it out? Yes. All right. Great.